وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ عَلَى حَرْفِ فَإِنْ أَصَابَهُ خَيْرٌ اطْمَأَنَّ بِهِ وَإِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ فِتْنَةٌ انْقَلَبَ عَلَى وَجْهِهِ خَسِرَ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ ذَلِكَ هُوَ الْخُسْرَانُ الْمُبِينُ تقال العسار العظام به ويعد الهوى ككبش ذبيح بذكر الإله الناس من يعبد الله على حرف I would translate that as among people there's somebody who worships Allah at the very edge, harf is actually the edge of a cliff also. They're worshipping Allah, they, they, they worship Allah but they, at the edge of a cliff. What does that mean? That means sometimes here, sometimes there. They're almost ready to fall off the cliff. They're not quite stable in their faith. They're not quite stable in their worship. They're not settled. They have unanswered questions, unresolved emotions. And so, how does that manifest itself? Allah describes Himself, فَإِنْ أَصَابَهُ خَيْرٌ إِطْمَأَنَّ بِهِ if some good comes to them, if something good happens in life, they're doing better now. Okay, okay, Allah actually listened to this dua, so I, I can pray now, I feel better. in asabat hu fitnatun, And if some fitna hits them, fitna means some kind of trial or something that tests their faith. Fitna literally means a test. Why is that word important? Because Allah is letting us know that when something bad happens to you, that is just Allah putting your faith to the test. Allah just wants to see whether you're willing to believe in, a, in, an, in an Allah that still loves, that still cares, that is still Ar-Rahman, that is still Ar-Rahim, even though you can't see it. Even though in front of you, you see like you've got hip problems. And shaitan wants you to question, where is Allah? He wants you to ask that question. So Allah wants to put you in that circumstance sometimes to see how strong your faith is. By the way, this deen begins with الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ They believe in an Allah who they cannot see. And by that doesn't just mean we don't see Allah. We don't see Allah's plan either. Allah doesn't lay out for you, here's how He's gonna have you go about your day. And here's what, you know, you're going through a difficulty now, but there's another ease coming in a few weeks or a few years or, what, or a few hours. We don't know. Is things are going to get better in the next minute? Or things are going to take 10 years? We, we just don't know. All he's asking you to do is trust him. Trust him that he loves you more than you could possibly even love yourself. That he gets nothing out of punishing you or torturing you. So when you and I go through trials, that's actually to check and see when we, because it's easy to believe in Allah when things are good. It just, it's easier. But it's harder to believe, especially some of those names of Allah. The names of Allah that we hold on to in difficult times. It's harder to hold on to them when, when we get hit. Now, how, do, how can... I wanted to dedicate this khutbah to two things. One, just fixing a little bit, calibrating our thinking about dua itself. The vast majority of the duas in the Qur'an, and the vast majorities of the dua in the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, you can find one common thing among them. The common thing among them is, they're in a way, in some way or the other, you're asking Allah to give you better ability. The point I'm trying to make is oftentimes we think the purpose of dua is to change the reality around us. We focus on changing the reality around us. But if you study the duas in the Quran, you'll notice that the change actually you're asking for is a change in yourself. Until that attitude is developed, and by the way, there will be a time when reality will submit around us. And that time is actually when we meet with Allah. They're going to have whatever they want. The problem is we want whatever we want right now. <laughs> Allah made a house in Firdaus for every human being. Not just every believer, every human being. But some people just didn't want to go. So when believers get there, there's going to be a lot of empty homes. May Allah make us of those who inherit homes in Jannah and not those whose homes remain empty. The, the, the house Allah has built for you and the house Allah has built for me is already there. The expectation from Allah for you to enter the highest place in Jannah is already there. Don't mess it up. Don't fall off the edge. Don't lose your faith in Allah. سيف الهم تراه استل سيف الهم تراه استل